Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Farmer Intelligence. We're here in Amsterdam attending the Bio Europe Spring Meeting. This is a meeting where the biotech, pharmaceutical and investors get together to sort of see what's uh, you know, potential deal making or you know, what's hot and what's, um, uh, what's exciting people. One of the most interesting areas is in the, sort of the oncology space, in, in particular in immune oncology. And therefore, there's a lot of people sort of actually fighting for a share of voice. I'm joined by Peter Jensen, who is the co-founder and CEO of Oncology Venture, a, a, a Danish company. Oncology Venture, it kind of says it on the, what it says on the, on, on the label. But how do you, how are you differentiating yourself and getting that share of voice in what is a pretty sort of uh, crowded area in oncology? So, uh, I'm a medical oncologist and uh, I've been, uh, I've been uh, in a company before that we formed in around 2000 where we actually had two products approved in the US uh, by the FDA oncology products. So, also, what, what, what was that so company? That was, that was Topo Target okay. and, and you probably heard about yes. it. And, yeah. so, so, we had two products approved and, and the second product we met Professor Knudsen who is doing, you can say, uh, systems biology approach. He's an engineer and has, you can say, used the access to tons of data that actually came out of the NCI 60. So you know there is a 60 cell line program that the NCI has been working with for years and 50,000 products have been tested on those 60 cell lines. So he went into, you can say, omics on those cell lines and utilizing the mRNAs to actually predict which cell lines would be sensitive to the product and which would not. And translating that into something of clinical relevance by looking at thousands of patients' biopsies to filter out irrelevant mRNAs from the models. And came to us and say, I think I know who should have Belinostat. And we said, how? We, we didn't know him, but basically he said, why don't you put it into peripheral T-cell lymphoma? And that was where it was eventually approved. Right. He also went uh, to Germany uh, in a messenger RNA or got the messenger RNAs from, the, from a German trial in leukemia and correctly predicted who got Belinostat. Right. That's a, Belinostat is an, is an H-DAG inhibitor. So it's a, you could say epigenetic. So it has an impact on several hundred genes. Yeah. So we thought it might be a, a you can say, one trick pony. But uh, after I left, uh, after I left Chopertide, I, I actually worked with him as a consultant for some time and could see that it works with several products. Right. And what we do now is in Oncology Venture using Sting Knudsen's DRP, drug response prediction technology, to in-license products where Steen's, uh, you can say, algorithm can predict response where, and where the products actually work, but where we can, you can say, leverage them to, to approval. And so we now have six products in license that all have demonstrated clear evidence, clear activity in patients, but all need, you can say, focus who should actually have it. We can use the biopsies of the patient, the original biopsies. All pathology departments have a biopsy from the patient on, on, in paraffin uh, embedded and formally in fixed, and you can say it has, it has sort of scared away all biochemistry, but we can today get very good quality mRNA out of those or, or those blocks. So that's what we do. Basically. So, so do you sort of identify almost like a, a, a potential patient population, right. and then look for drugs that can, can can treat them? Yeah, or you can say the other way around because we have the drugs. So we right. say we now take breast cancer patients. We just we just published how we how we work with the liposomal cisplatinum that has the advantage by being liposomal, but also using the cisplatinum prediction and treating only the top one third of the high likelihood responders. So that one third of heavily pretreated uh, patients, we could give them a 25 weeks of response, uh, sort of compared to 16 weeks of, you can say, doctor's choice. So it's obvious that if we use this, you can call it digitalization in pharma yeah. to really identify much deeper than we usually, I mean, I'm a doctor, we usually, and the biochemist, they, we always want to have the culprit and say, this is the target. If we hit that, we probably have a good success. But there's many things happening around it. There may be repair systems, there may be uh, transport systems that are killing your uh, mechanism of action. And that should be, put all that into trying to, try to embrace that complexity in algorithms. That's basically what we do. So, so wh what does somebody who's going to sell you an asset, because you say that you acquire yeah, assets, yeah. what do they have 
already had to have demonstrated to yeah. sort of catch your attention? We, we, we like to see a phase two program where there has been responders. Right. So responders in a cancer indication and the best of all world is also when there are biopsies from that study because then we can look at the biopsies and see could we actually predict it. We've just done that with an ISI, a PARP, a PARP inhibitor uh, that we analyzed from ISI where they had not many but 16 biopsies from this trial and we could correctly predict who benefited. So that gives us a lot of confidence when we go out and do trials with that product with our companion diagnostic. And then of course we aim to, you can say, move forward and sell it to, to a, a partner to, uh, to, that has the distribution strengths using our companion diagnostic to focus with that specific patient population. Okay, and, and what would the deal structure therefore look like? You know, you get this, uh, this you know, PARP inhibitor from, from, from ISA, so, so Yeah, but I, I think you can say that we would have to pay heavily upfront, but I think the, the big pharma that we've been, we've got a license from also from Novartis, I think that there is a growing concern that we might be right or something like that. That, that, there is, uh, that, that could probably be something about what we're doing. And therefore, I think that we're also being used, uh, we're not so much up front, and it's not like it's killing milestones. It's sort of typically uh, milestones, I think we, uh, you could say between 20 and, and 40 in development, and then a royalty to the drug owner. But it's also obvious that we want to create a situation where the drug owner sees a, a, an opportunity with their product, so we go together. So, so the companion diagnostic is to totally key Yes. So the, yes, it's the algorithm. Yes, to, to, to the whole thing. Yeah. So, I mean, do you describe yourselves as a precision medicine company or a, a companion diagnostic company yeah. or, or a drug development or company. a drug development yes. company? Yes, and yes, it must be all three. Yeah, that you can yeah. say that the, the companion diagnostic has to be approved together with the product, right. which gives us. I mean, I think that different. Uh, if you depending on what country you're in, how do you gonna how do you gonna do that in the U.S. We have the opportunity to take the IP on our companion diagnostic in the Orange Book as well, meaning that even old products can have, you can say, a uh, sort of a prolongation of the of the protection. Uh, whereas in, in in Asia, you may say that it's only the the the, okay. the composition of matter pattern that actually matters. Okay. So, uh, sort of final question. I mean, having six programs that are in sort of you know phase two and beyond. Um, it's not. It, it, it's quite an expensive pursuit. Yes. yes, yes. So, so how are you financing all that? So, effort? first of all, first of all, you can say in any trial we do, we, we actually go in and repeat what was done before, right. so that we say let's screen 100 patients with metastatic breast cancer, only treat the 20. And you can almost say that because we're doing open label studies, you can say if the first eight, if we don't get four or five benefiters in, in that pool, we could stop. So it's really not that expensive. And especially if you focus and say, we've done the screen with a global mRNA program, meaning that you can actually do umbrella studies. So you can say breast cancer patients for, uh, on a site, you have maybe three or four products that the patient can be, you can say, going into. So it's, it's very costly, but it's not as costly as we're used to. I, I mean, it took us in, in Topo Target, I mean, from we got the, the Belinostat, into the into the phase one i mean it took 10 years yeah. and this is a very very fast route first to prove a concept that the drp actually can enrich the response rate and next use that to do focused trials where you have a huge difference between doctor's choice and yours so you don't have to come up with big trials but that's also for our partners how do we sell it how to move that forward okay and how, how many programs do you think you can handle? I think I actually think because of the umbrella studies. I mean, we've done we're doing breast cancer. We're also doing we're also doing ovarian and prostate and multiple myeloma. I actually think that once we have, you can say, those patients, if we have a, a system where we're able to screen the patients and keep, you can say, the screening information, a lot of those patients will have benefit of another product. Will, will, eventually relapse and might be, you say, going into our study. So I think that there can be a number of products. And you can say we do have products waiting in the lobby to move on, but it's also obvious that we have to prioritize what we're doing. And we've seen, since we started, we started on Cardi Venture in, in, in uh, June 15, we've seen that the products we got in the first row, I mean, now we're getting big pharma compounds and, and they are just, they just, you can say, the quality of the products is also strong now. And so you can also say that some things may not be evaluated as high as others. 
but still you say eight patients is where you want to you want to you give that chance to any product okay good well peter thanks very much for thank you Mark. cheers